The Kahana woman who inspired legislation for tougher sentences in felonious assault cases died today. Judy Malinowski was just 33 years old. Thank you for joining us at 5. I'm Colleen Marshall. I'm Mark Taylor. Her passing comes on the same day that Judy's law moves forward at the Ohio State House. It's now one vote away from heading to the governor's desk. Now, NBC4 first brought you the news of Judy's death and an alert from our news app this afternoon. And tonight we have team coverage of this story. Rob Sneed looking into the possibility of new charges against Judy's attacker, her ex-boyfriend, Michael Slager. He could now be faced with murder. But first, let's get right to Katie Farrell, who's been following this story since the very beginning. She joins us live from St. Anne's Hospital with the very latest. Katie? You know, I spoke with Judy's mom and her kids today at home, and as you can imagine, it's a really tough, sad day for this entire family. Judy passed away here at the hospital behind me this morning with her devoted mom, Bonnie, right there by her side like she has always been through this. Judy had been receiving end-of-life care for the past few months as her health slowly deteriorated. Her doctors said they had no medical explanation in the end as to how she was able to stay alive over these past few weeks. Bonnie said she is confident her daughter was fighting to see Judy's law through to the very end. Now this is all still just sinking in for Judy's girls. She leaves behind a 13 and 9 year old Kaylin and Madison. Today they told me how much they already miss their mom and how they worry if everything's going to be okay now. They talked to me in February about how tough the past two years have been. I wish this wouldn't have even happened. I wish that if I could just rewind I would Chain her up in the basement so she couldn't get out. Such sweet girls. It just breaks your heart to hear something like that. You know, in February, we asked you, our viewers, to send us cards to give to Judy, and we got them by the hundreds. We want to say thank you. The girls read them to their mom while she was in the hospital, and they really found it to be a heartwarming thing to do together. We are now asking for our viewers to send cards to the girls. So if you want to learn more, go to our website, send them to us, and we will make sure that her little girls, her sweet little girls, get those messages. And our team coverage continues now. We want to send it back. Back to the newsroom. Rob Snead live at the Watch for Alert desk with the possible new charges Judy's attacker faces. Rob? Well, Prosecutor Ron O'Brien says he is sad to hear about Judy's passing but wasn't surprised. He says he doesn't believe Slager has any remorse. Now, this was Michael Slager in court back in December 2016. He pleaded no contest to the charges against him. Now, the court sentenced him to 11 years in prison for aggravated arson, but now that Judy is dead, the prosecutor says he will now review all of Judy's recent medical records and wait for an exact cause of death. Now, if the aggravated arson is what killed Judy, then Slager will be indicted for aggravated murder, according to the prosecutor. She was obviously loved by her family, will be missed by her family, and we have uh, committed to them that we will seek uh, a homicide charge and uh, seek justice on her behalf. And court records also show that Slager has a history of domestic violence. O'Brien hopes to know the cause of death within the next several weeks. Rob Sneed, NBC4. And getting justice for Judy continues tonight. Her death comes on the same day that legislation named in her honor makes a giant leap forward. Judy's law passed unanimously out of a Senate committee today. It now heads to the full Senate floor for a vote. The potential law adds six years to sentences in cases like Judy's where an accelerant is used and the victim is disfigured. Representative Jim Hughes, who introduced the legislation, says he's confident Judy's legacy will live on in this new law. Her legacy is going to live on through this legislation. I just can't state enough how much she suffered and didn't even take some medicine to talk to me and others about what this legislation meant to her. Now, this bill passed unanimously out of the House. Representative Hughes does not see any opposition in the Senate. Now, the Senate could vote on Judy's Law as early as tomorrow, meaning that Judy's Law could be a reality before lawmakers break for summer recess. NBC4 has been closely following Judy's story for the past two years. She has, was doused with gasoline and set on fire outside a Gahanna gas station back in August of 2015. In January, she recorded a deposition that could be used as evidence in a future murder trial. Judy's law was introduced in the House back in February, passed in May. That same month, Judy was moved to a palliative care center. NBC4 set up a fund to help Judy and her family. With your help, we've collected more than $3,000.
Judy's family says they will use those funds to pay for her funeral costs and to help her daughters. You can still donate at any Huntington Bank and tell them you want to donate to the Judy Malinowski Fund. You can count on NBC4 for updates as well on Judy's case on air and online at NBC4i.com. You can see our stories about her journey by clicking on the News tab on our homepage.